Let's talk about resonance structures for SO2, sulfur dioxide. So there are three resonance structures that we really need to discuss here. Sulfur dioxide, it's a little bit of a tricky one. We have resonance structures that we would get if we follow the rules for drawing Lewis structures and looking at resonance. And then we have the resonance structure that we would actually see in a laboratory setting where we did an experiment and determined the structure of SO2. So let's draw the Lewis structure and then talk about resonance. For SO2, we'll put S in the center and then the oxygens on the outside. We normally put the least electronegative element in the center, so sulfur makes sense there. We have a total of 18 valence electrons for sulfur dioxide, so we'll put two between the atoms, and then we'll complete the octets around the outer atoms. We've used 16 valence electrons. We had 18, so we'll put two here, and we've used our valence electrons up we don't have an octet on the sulfur. So in this case, we could move these two valence electrons here to form a double bond. So now we have eight valence electrons around the sulfur, eight around the oxygen, same for this oxygen. So this is a valid Lewis structure based on our rules. There's another way we could draw this. So let's make a copy of this, then we can draw a resonance structure for SO2. So you might ask why put the double bond here and not over here? and it really doesn't matter. We could put these two back here and we could make the double bond here as well. So it's the same layout, except it's kind of a mirror image. This would be considered a resonance structure for this SO2 molecule here. Let's replace the bonds here with lines. And then to show that these are resonance structures, let's shrink them down a bit and put them in the proper notation. So these would be two resonance structures for SO2. But there's a bit of a problem with these Lewis structures. Let's take a look at that. So if we look at the formal charges for this Lewis structure of SO2, we would have formal charges of a minus one, a plus one, and then a zero. And when we're doing Lewis structures, we like these to be as close to zero as possible. So we can actually change this structure so that all of the formal charges are zero. And we'll do that by moving this pair of electrons to the center. So let's make this a double bond. So now all of the formal charges are zero. And this is a really good Lewis structure for SO2. Our rules and our theory say this is the best Lewis structure for SO2. The problem is that if we go into the lab and we test and we figure out the bond lengths for this, this actually isn't what we see. What we see are these resonance structures. So while in class or in school, if you were asked to draw the Lewis structure for SO2, you'd want to do something like this because it follows the rules, it matches the theory. But these are what we see in the lab. And let's talk about those for just a second. So these two resonance structures for SO2, this little double-edged arrow here, that tells us that these are two resonance structures. It doesn't mean that these are flipping back and forth between each other. What it means is that because Lewis structures kind of limit us in the way we can represent where the electrons are, that it's an average of these two. So really, instead of a double bond and a single bond, the real structure that we see is like a 1.5 bond. It's an average of these two. So while these are resonant structures, they're really just one structure. They're not flipping back and forth. It's not an equilibrium. So this is Dr. B with the resonance structures for SO2. This is really kind of what theory tells us, that there would be just this here. But in reality, these two resonance structures here really accurately represent what we'd see in the lab. And that actual structure would be an average or a combination of these two. This is Dr. B, and thanks for watching.